Well, thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much, Sue, for uh, making the arrangements with the convention to, uh, to Skype in. I came from six hours away to see you, and so I'm so glad I could at least see you eye to eye this way. And um, I'm here as an enormous GEM fan, representing the GEM fan oh, yeah. And especially all of your fans over on GEMCON. We love you, and we're, we're, so, uh, we're so excited. Uh, well, I'm so excited to be able to talk with you and ask you. I know that there was a great deal of overlap between the people who worked on the Gen cartoon and also Transformers. So I'd just like to know, what did you find uh, the, the differences between the two, maybe compare and contrast? And also, do you have any favorite memories between those two series? Oh gosh, I've got, I've got so many uh, great memories. You know, it was really a prolific time in animation. <clears throat> we were starting, and Greg, I think, will agree with this, we were starting to do 65 episodes instead of 13. Yeah. And I, you know, when you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. And I was so pleased to uh, land the role of RC. Just, uh, I was so excited, and I was very excited to work with Wally Burr. He's a wonderful director. <laughs> and at the same time, they were casting Jam. And I loved getting the role of Stormer and Lindsay, the talk show host, and Stormer, the misfit, one of the misfits, and loved both roles. I had to keep, you know, our scene was very heroic and um, and, and, and a grown up, and, and I had to play the levels of, you know, robot with feelings, with all of that, where Stormer. You know, Stormer was just kind of a bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like really fun to play. And of course, Lindsay was, you know, very the talk show. So, it, you know, in changing voices, I mean, that's why, you know, like Grimlock should have had a wife. <laughs> saw Sue do it when she jumped in and out. Uh, they, no, no casting person and no director is looking for voices. Uh, they're looking for characters. And when you saw Sue jump in and out, she didn't change voices, she changed characters. You just watched her transform. It wasn't vocal, it was, <laughs> well, it, she didn't roll out, but she did transform. Hello. Uh, but, but the transformation is not from voice to voice, it's from character to character. You, 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 you jump in and out of, uh, out of different uh, um, characterizations. The, the voice follows, but what happens is, is mental and physical as well as vocal, and, and the voice follows. Uh, they, they cast characters, not voices. That's so true. Uh, Greg made such a good point because, you know, and I'm sure that Greg has had this happen, you know, people have come up to us and, and said, you know, I can do voices. And there's like nothing, you know, here's the vocal cord, that's 10%. But there's the heart, the soul, in, in, um, and when you create the character, the voice will come. It's the same as, and I've used this analogy, but in Field of Dreams, when they say build it, build the ball field and they will come. Exactly. If you build the character, <laughs> from the heart, from the soul up, the voice will come. Yeah, it's a three-dimensional commitment, and people don't realize that, but need to. 